What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Sprint Talk. Today we have a great panel uh, here. We are kind of going on a new and old vibe today. You know, we have some people who've been in our agency for, you know, a few years, maybe five plus, and some people who've been with us three plus, and then some people who just joined this year. So I'm going to let them introduce yourselves. Uh, starting with you, Terrence. Uh, I'm Terrence Laird. Uh, I run for Adidas, and I've been with Mark for two years. Hey, I'm Candace Hill. I run for ASICS, and I've been with Mark for eight years. Yeah. I'm Morgan Beetlescombe. I run Distance. Uh, I just signed with Mark last June. I'm Bryce. Uh, I run the 800 meters, run for Adidas, and I've been with Mark for like three years. All right. So, Candace, I'm, I'm going to start with you. Okay. You're the reason that I'm in this agency. No lie. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> when... I was, me and my family were, you know, in our senior year, we were trying to go pro and we just couldn't find an agent that kind of caught our vision and Josephus was just like, let's talk to Candace's agent. You know, he obviously must know what he's doing. He's dealt with younger athletes, gotten them good deals. Um, like, let's figure out what he's all about. And, you know, we contacted you and we had the conversation with Mark and, you know, it was, I mean, the story was written. Yeah. In that part, but how do you feel being the catalyst of such a great program? <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, it's funny when you say that because it's like Mark's group has grown since 2016. Like when it was me and you in Vegas in 2016 doing a little shoot and stuff. Yeah. It was like five people. It was you, yeah. me, Josephus, Cindy, Dominique. Bro, uh, uh, oh gosh, I'm drawing a blank on his name. 800, got it. Donovan. Oh, Donovan. Donovan. Yep, Donovan. Yeah, Lord. <laughs> Sorry, Donovan. Donovan Brazier. <laughs> right. Can't forget about him. But yeah, and so looking at this year, looking at the pictures, the group, there's about 14, no, not 14, 20 of there's us? There's easily 23 30? of us. Easily. I yeah. Mark sent me the list of everybody because I contacted you um, all to see if you guys would be okay with doing this. And I was just going to the list and I had to make cuts because everybody got back saying that they'd be interested. And I felt so bad because right. I... Just so many great people to talk to. It's just really hard. And yeah, I mean, we went out yesterday and we did the, the group pictures. So those pictures actually were supposed to be all like individualized. Right. All in the strip. But because we're so big now. Yeah. And it took forever. <laughs> yeah. Like with, and I don't think Kevin shot everybody. I think it was like 14 people. I, didn't, I didn't get an individual. Right. I was just so tired. Yeah. Time. And then having to like, trying to crop everybody into the photo. It was kind of like, all right, now everyone huddling together. We're like, okay, we're like sardines now. But yeah, it's just amazing to see how big the group has grown and just where global athletics is going because I feel like it could be a big empire. And it, I think it is becoming I, I an empire. I feel it is. Yeah. Like it's one of the biggest agencies in track and field right now. I mean, I even felt like right? standing out there taking the photos, like who I'm standing by. I'm like, dang, like, I get to be in this group. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. And we're all talented. That's the thing. It's like, we're all, not it's so not like, we're not scrubs. Park ain't choosing the scrubs. Right. He's like, no. I also think like just with all the brands, like, I know like HSI yeah. and other brands, they stick to like one brand, but like we have everybody. Yeah. Uh, like, and I think that's also what makes it more comfortable. Like, that's we're all wearing Adidas except for Yeah, we got that. <laughs> that's cool. except we for have Adidas. Nike people, but yeah. people. And then like, obviously when, you know, new prospects come up, we're not just tied to, oh, you gotta run for Adidas, you gotta run for Nike. Exactly. Like, everybody can have kind of, you know, their own little feng shui. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I definitely like the diversity for sure. Mm -hmm. I think if anything, it's given a lot of insight. So usually if I'm, talking to somebody like uh, Jake, Jake Whiteman, and he's telling me all the things that he's able to do because he's a New Balance athlete and, you know, they don't particularly have, you know, a, a plethora of Scottish, right. <laughs> uh, you know, distance runners, 1,500 meter runners, you know, they are singling in on him and, you know, getting him out there. Mm -hmm. So I always love to see stuff like that for sure. Yeah. Like you said, being from different countries as well, like, there's people on the roster. I'm like, oh, wow, Mark represents this. <laughs> like, I'm on the Global Athletics website. Like, oh, okay, this face and this face. But, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I was actually at Worlds, and I was uh, talking to Josephus, and he brought in this kid, and this is it's at the after party. He's like, oh, he just signed with Mark. Yeah, man, I just signed with Mark. <laughs> I was just like, dang. 
we need to have another Vegas trip. <laughs> Why Mark just got all these people I don't know. Right. I was a little sad that we like we hadn't done it for the past two years. And like I heard about like oh yeah. I used to do this, like why haven't we gone to Vegas yet? Yeah. yeah that's, that's Definitely when you told me I'm like, we're going to Vegas, I'm like is it a Jesus thing? Because I like I'm I'm new newer, and obviously with the pandemic, like you know, you guys haven't done it. But I was like, "What is this? Like we're going to Vegas?" And I'm just like, "Okay, we there's a meet up there, or like, <laughs> yeah. it's like a Jesus thing." He's like, "No, no Mark thing." But I was never you know aware that you guys done this before. So I was like, "Okay, cool. Like I'm I'm down. Like you know, just let me know." Yeah. Yeah. Bryce told me about Vegas when we were in Boston. I'm like, "Oh, this is." bigger group than I thought. Yeah. <laughs> he was bringing guys in for uh, for races in Boston from Ethiopia that had never been mm-hmm. to America. And we're like, you really represent like people yeah. all over the world. Yeah. Global. 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 Uh, I would say for me, um, my Juco coach was really close to Tyson Gay. Mm-hmm. Um, and I asked, you know, those guys, like, what do you think? Like, you know, just before, you know, obviously I'm an NCAA athlete, so I can't sign with somebody. Well, put me in the right direction. And he said, Mark's going to do right by you. And obviously he, he did everything, you know, he promised. And from that point on, it was just match me in heaven. Like, I think, you know, definitely, you know, for me, I can't run a Nikes. Can't, I mean, I hated at LSU. So <laughs> going with Adidas was definitely – the option um and then just kind of just with mark and everything we kind of mapped out and just kind of his relationship with you know my previous coaches really felt more comfortable and felt like a smooth transition where it wasn't meeting somebody new for the first time or you know trying to find out you know what this person's about so it definitely was very uh very easy to do yeah something that was unique with mark was um when i was talking to i talked to nick willis and he pointed me to mark i was i had a conversation with him over the phone um he really was very open to working with anybody in any company. Yeah. So it was like, okay, this this guy doesn't like this guy in the sport, and these people don't get along, and you can't get into this meet because your agent isn't liked by this guy. Mm-hmm. And Mark just, oh yeah, everybody <laughs> really likes him. <laughs> yeah. like you can get with really any company you want to like go to. Um, and there were a couple companies that he currently doesn't represent any athletes with, but he knows the people. Yeah. And he's like, oh yeah, I can get you in. I just don't work with anybody right now. Yeah. And that happens. I mean, there's it's a small, a lot of companies in small sports. So being open to those ideas was very big for me. Uh, that's how it was for me. Like with like, cause he said, Nike or Adidas. And I said, I don't care what Nike's offering. I can't wear their shoes. So like it was, <laughs> it was at that point, I like, it was just, you know, more Adidas. Cause I could not like my feet, like I had to wear insoles. It was just, it was hectic. So like, I just knew from the jump, he's like, you know, he's going to, you know, negotiate deal. I said, Nike's not, they have, don't have a chance. And that was just from the standpoint, if you want me to run well, can't wear their shoes. So yeah, it was, it was definitely, you know, I have a mark on the side. I felt confident. Yeah. I, my mom was kind of, you know, we call, call Candace and, then we got on the phone with Mark, and he literally flew out day the next day to meet with us <laughs> in person. And you know, me here we are, my mom, Josephus, and me showing up at, at a hotel, and he rented out, you know, a conference room, and we had a full blown conversation, retelling him what our goals and aspirations was. And I, me and Josephus, looked him in the eye and said, "To be honest, we want to transcend the sport. You know, we're not here to be." your average guys, your guys who win, you know, a bunch of medals and then just gets forgotten about. Yeah. No, we want to touch the other side of what it is to be a you know, global athlete. You know, I want to see the the ESPN body shoes, the GQs, the the front pages of in, um, Vogue, you know. Like I want to go out and try everything. I don't want to get stuck in this place. And when, you know, I would tell that to other agents, they were just like, well, you know, <laughs> it kind of depends on your situation. It's like, no, I'm going to make the situation <laughs> make the available. Situation. Okay. Are you going to do the job to go out there and, and market me for that? Yeah. Right. And he was like, done. Yeah. <laughs> and still to this day, anytime that I tell him an idea, it's not... Well, you know, it's kind of a tough situation. It's no. It's like, you know what? I can see this. Let's find a way to work on this. Right. Yeah. And I love that. And I was like, every time, it's like, yeah, that's why you're saving to Mark Wetmore, best agent ever. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he loves rolling the sport. 
Like he was, uh, I talked to him and we were just talking about racing and he was really mad about all the little time trials that, okay, it was one race and it was like a 5k mm -hmm. and they'd only run a 5k and nobody knew about it, but they hit a world standard. It's like, that's not helping anybody. So yeah. he's really into growing sport. Yeah. And even having this, um, summit, like I like to yeah. call it, like we get to learn how to interview and how to speak in front of a camera. And a lot of agencies don't help their athletes develop off the track. Yeah. And I feel like Mark does a really mm -hmm. good job of making sure, no, we're not just going to worry about your performance on the track. We're going to make sure that you're representing yourself, mm -hmm. you're representing the company well, and like you can get offers and deals yeah. off of just yeah. your presence alone. Yeah. And so I like how he puts emphasis on that. And I feel like it creates like a family too. Like right. it's a very yeah. individualized sport where like when you bring everyone together, like it creates this like excitement, like, oh, like, I guess be a part of like something bigger a little bit. And yeah. just like, feel like a team. With yeah. all the disciplines. Yes. yes. Exactly. Long, yeah, long like distance, mid distance, sprinters, jumpers, throwers. Marathoners. <laughs> Marathoners, yeah. <laughs> like off the track, marathon, road racers, yeah. Man, you don't know how, like, I know you just got here, but when you go to like USA's and Worlds, and you just look around and everybody's kind of like doing well, or even mm -hmm. just at the championships, you're just so excited to see each other competing. It's just like, bro, like, yeah. <laughs> you did that thing. And, oh, man, I remember we were at USA's and, and Aaliyah broke the American record. And what's funny is about it, if, truthfully, if nobody introduced me to Aaliyah through this program, I probably would just be like, oh, that's cool for her. Yeah. But because we were all able to, you know, me and Gree and Marlon together, it's like, oh, my gosh, I know your story. I know, like, this is exciting. I know what you had to go through, like, like I'm now yeah. like so much more excited for you. Even when Jake Whiteman won Worlds, it's like he's from Scotland. Yeah. He's not American. Yeah. He's not even with Adidas. Yeah. And it's oh my God, we're so happy for him because yes. we know him. He's a great dude, mm -hmm. very down to earth. We know him because of Mark. Yeah. And yeah, so that it does bring us all together. I also think like just with a lot of different countries, you just different cultures, different you know mm -hmm. upbringings. So like you know America, you know it's a lot different than other countries. You yeah. know, and then they have, you know, different testimonies and different, you know, things that they did. You know, these guys, you know, just started their country growing up. You know, some people here, you know, you, every year it's somebody new. You mm -hmm. know, it's like this new phenom. And now, like, and if you're from, like, Jareem, you know, he's been the guy right. since he's been a kid. You know, like, yeah. They, yeah. they, he's, you know, he's been in the Pride Federation, you know, office and getting awards and medals all his life. So I just been like, you know, just different people's testimony. We're all doing the same thing. We're all trying to be the best we can be. And obviously, you know, maximizing our talent. They just have you know, have a good agent. Mm -hmm. yeah, do that, yeah. So, even though we've been talking about and bragging on our agent <laughs> for a good fifteen, he deserves it. He deserves no, it. No, he yeah. really took the fifteen minutes. Um, I mean, look at this room. Yeah. <laughs> no, look at where we are. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but the reason I, I did bring you here is because I wanted to be able to share stories from you know all aspects of the journey of track and field mm -hmm. with Terrence and. Oh my gosh, I just completely Morgan. <laughs> I, like, I always know it starts with an M, but I can never like get it. But Terrence and Morgan, you guys are the newest guys. How has the journey been so far, truthfully? Uh, for me, I mean, I was hurt last year. Um, and that was kind of frustrating just because, I, you know, ran well 2021. And really, Mark and Artie, like, they just kept me like, we're just going to just find out what the problem is and correct it. You know, like, obviously, it's not the end all be all. You know, I. So it's kind of them always, you know, talking to me every day, you know, getting, you know, getting, you know, attention. Like I got went over to Germany, never been to Germany before. Got you know, see Doc and Mueller. Yeah, and I was, mm. I'm, I haven't had anything since. So like without Mark and without like, you know, there's probably other agents that could pull it off, but without Mark and already, you know, persistent to be great, I wouldn't be where I'm at right now. I wouldn't be able to run, um, and wouldn't be able to be able to compete. So I think just that, um, just promise from day one that we're gonna do everything in our, and as long as you do everything you're in. And I said, yeah, like. I'll do everything I can. I'm going to go out here and compete and, and run and stuff. But if I'm not 100%, how can I, you know, how can I run? So just that, you know, just that, you know, support support and promise that they, you know, made. And I mean, Mark met me over in Germany, you know, and for me, it's, that's like more personal because you have kids, you have a wife, but you're going to come all the way to Germany for an athlete you signed, right? I don't really know Mark all my life, but you signed, right? And I'm injured, cool. But like you come all the way to Germany. You know, to make sure that everything's good and not, not I get it, you know, I'm making money, but it's still like just that 
just taking his time out of the day to come away from his family to make sure I'm okay. You know, that's just, for me, it was like, okay, like, this is, you know, you, there's different things, you know, words, but words, you can't, you can't match that. Mm-hmm. You know, so I feel like that was definitely something where, like, I felt more comfortable, like, all right, I'm going I'm to I'm get get this right, you know, or, and I'm, whatever Doc says I'm going to do, and that's what I've been doing, and I'm healthy now, I'm ready to run. A man of his, yeah. a man of his word, Mark, really is. Yeah, um, so right after USA's, uh, it was pretty obvious that the long college season took a toll on me, and I was pretty burnt out, but Mark's like, yeah, let's go to Italy. Um, there's races there. I know a meat director there. Just run, no expectations. Can't say no to that. Yeah. yeah. No, it's like, and the big thing was like, I didn't have a contract yet. It was still being negotiated between a couple companies. And I, I know he had an idea of a number, but he really bank, he bankrolled the whole thing and took a risk. And I knew I went over my travel budget. I know I did because we flew to Italy then we went to London and we were flying around doing all these meets over in Europe. And, um, uh, so I spent the summer in Europe, really no expectations. And that not having somebody breathe down your neck was huge. Just, I was tired and I was running close to my PRs. It's like, you're doing more than what we expected. Just yeah. getting out there and, uh, and running at a global stage. And yeah, USA's wasn't what I expected it to be. And he's like, doesn't matter. Just go, just go run and learn to enjoy the pro life and learn to learn to be a pro and then come back, take some time off and, then focus on winning. And I, yeah. I did. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's, I love to hear that because I agree with you that he's not a guy who's going to breathe down your neck. He, he's not mm-hmm. he's not the guy who's going to force you to run because he needs money. Because <laughs> yeah. he does. He's, he's, got, he's got a lot of really good people. <laughs> yeah. 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 He's good. But it didn't always start like that. You know, when me and Candace entered, he was regrouping. Yeah. You know, he was going... You know, uh, Tyson was pretty much at the end of his career. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jasmine's uh, Stowers, uh, the hurdler. Yeah, 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 the hurdler. Uh, she was at the end of her career. Mm-hmm. Uh, he had just taken on um, four four hundred runner uh, for Under Armour. Uh, Natasha. Uh, Natasha Hastings okay. Natasha. from another agency. Yeah. Okay. And she was kind of already at the end of her career. Like right. he was, you know, regrouping. And to be honest, I I, I think he kind of. Took a risk on me and Josephus. I mean, yeah. yeah, I was a high school kid and he decided he was going to turn me pro. And, yeah. and it, Josephus was hurt, was injured when he signed. Yeah. Full blown tour quad. Yeah. yeah. We had it That's at the lot. moment, at the time. It was crazy to think that he was going to you know, take that chance. Well, he kind of took a chance on me too. <laughs> <laughs> Coming out of high school, I mean, in high school, going to high school classes, it's like, okay. And then he got me this 10 year deal, which is like historic. And so I'm like, all right, that's huge. I'm like, all right, he's my agent. So I'm going to be like, what you want? Right. I'm going to roll with you. Right. We repping global. But banking off of what you said, he's not breathing down your neck. Like, I haven't ran close to my PR since I've signed and I haven't felt any type of negativity or pressure toward like from Mark. And even from my company, he's kind of like told the shoe company, like, okay, Kansas trying her hardest. Like she's out there every day. She's diligent. Like give her a break. Like Mm -hmm. she's learning. This is a fight for you. Right. Right. And so I just felt the love and support from day one. And I still continue to feel that, which is like, so like heartfelt because it's like other agencies would have been like yeah you're done you're yeah. scrapped yeah you know so, so terrence said something that kind of really resonated with me um i'm by the way i'm going to ask you to talk about your mueller story because yeah. i have a crazy one too uh but he was talking about him being out there in germany for the first time ever and mark coming over to check on him and just having that sense of security and you know, having a man of his word, somebody, again, Kenneth, you're talking about fighting for you and not breathing down your neck. Mm-hmm. Like, would you say that having an agent like that makes you want to perform better or even just give you a chance to breathe to grow? I think it, for me, it definitely, like, obviously it was hurt, right? So whatever I ran wasn't going to be what they were expecting. And obviously, we're like, when I ran indoor this year, like, he was just like, just go out there and just run, don't matter what it is. So I feel like he gives you, like, you don't have to be perfect, right? Because none of us perfect. Not everybody mm-hmm. runs a personal best every race, mm-hmm. but he gives you a chance to 
figure things out. You know, when you every time you go to a starting line, you're not going to feel like a world record time. Yeah. It just yeah. is what yeah. it is. So he gives you that like, I guess he takes the heat from the shoe companies because you know they they want to yeah. maximize their dollar. I get it, but he just takes the heat and you know takes the heat from the negativity and turns into love to us where we don't have to worry about man you know if you don't run fast this race it's over like so i feel like just the, he takes so much pressure and so much stuff and he converts it into positive energy where we can just go out there and be ourselves with no expectations and then when we do well it looks good on him and you know the shoe company but for him i don't even if it makes us feel good he helps us perform well because somebody's pressuring you every time you run we need a world record it's not gonna happen. I don't care who you are. I mean, yeah. every time you run, you're not gonna run a personal best unless you're running super slow. But like, <laughs> you're, just, you're, not, yeah. you're probably doing it wrong if you're doing that. Right, right. right. You're you're running a personal right. best every race, and especially when you get to like world class time, it's hard. Like, mm -hmm. it's really hard. I think just him taking all that pressure off of us, and you know, just channeling to other ways, it helps. And obviously, when you get to you know the the time, you know, championship time. Just go out there and have fun. Yeah. Because if you don't have fun, you're not gonna run well. Have fun. If you worry yeah, about, like, if you, yeah, if you worry about like I gotta run this time and stuff, like it's not gonna happen. Like you go out there and just have fun, you're gonna do so much better, and then you're just gonna enjoy it. Yeah. Good or bad, you know, mm -hmm. it happens. Right. Anybody else want to speak to that? Yeah, I I did my first like pro race in uniform. Um, so I did the whole summer the Europe stint. I didn't wear any. I wore my high school or college uniform, and then uh, took two months in flag. I mean that meanwhile uh, I was signing and negotiating the deals, the final details. And then I came and did this fun like turkey trot race. It was a <laughs> we, we got a bonus, like it was a turkey uh, trot. Yeah. The so, pinnacle of track. Yeah, yeah. The pinnacle of running. Um no, it was literally it was a turkey trot and then they invited pros and the the prize is like seven grand for first, yeah. which is it's good for an off season race. It's really good for an off season race with uh another three thousand dollars in potential bonuses. Yeah. So it was a it was a good race, and I wound up getting second to some guys who had won. Uh, I lost to a guy who had won cross country, but I also beat a guy who won cross country mm -hmm. uh, in the NCAA's and national champions. Um, I beat some national record holders, and he called me up. He's like, "Oh, that's so great! You you know, the second <laughs> place to this guy who's to Connor Mance, who's really good." Um, and yeah, like, where are you where do you think you're going to go for dinner? What are your what are your plans <laughs> now? And it's just like. Yeah, great race. He called me right up, and now it's like, okay, let's have some fun. Go, go do something with a small off-season meet. It's like yeah. a preseason. We we're kind of celebrating a preseason, and uh, yeah, I wound up taking my taking my mom to Boston oh. <laughs> for for dinner nice. on Thanksgiving. So that was really cool to have somebody there, and of course, he's from Boston, so right, yeah, told yeah. me all the good good spots. Right. All right. The last we're kind of getting to the last few minutes, so the last little talk I want to go into is the climate of our sport. What do you feel like the climate of our sport is kind of in? You know, of course, we have people who, like me, who believe there needs to be a line drawn. Um, there's people who might want to say, okay, how do I advance a business in track and field? Or what do you feel the pulse of, you know, the fans is right now? You know, since we have a lot of people who are in different parts of the season, mm -hmm. how do you gauge the pulse of track and field right now. When you say line drawing, what were you saying? So I'm okay. talking about the line between professional, amateur, mm -hmm. okay. high school, college. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. That that's how I draw. The you line. think we should be more separate? Like I you should have a distinct do believe there needs to be a distinct line and mm -hmm. I you think, need to match this line to get to each level. I think the professional like it's I feel like it's hard to really draw the line just because of times. Like there's people running times in all age groups that are comparable. Like there's girls, high school, they're running just as fast as pro girls. And I get the training, you know, they're in different training cycles, but just when you look at the, just the raw times and just evolution, people getting faster. I mean, there's can be lines draw when you're like the top of your game, but I feel like that just middle pack is so hard to, to draw the line. Cause you have college kids, like for example, I was a college kid and I was running faster than some pros. Mm -hmm. So like, but I get it, the training's, training's different, but I'm putting the same amount of work as them running faster. And I get they might be banged up, they're going through stuff, but I feel like when you're like that upper echelon, right? Like yourself and other people, even myself, like we should be recognized, but then it should be like that middle pack. I feel like it's just so, you know, black and white where, you know, you kind of can't. Cause I mean, Arian, like, you know, he's a high school kid. And just because he's 16, 17, you know, obviously 18 now, but we shouldn't categorize him as amateur just because he's in high school. 
Like, for mm-hmm. example, Candace, she runs faster than some, you know, pro girls in high school. But just because she's 16, I mean, it's, I feel like it's different than other sports because, like, football, basketball, baseball. You know, if you're 16, you're good. It's like, okay, let me see what happens when you go to college and stuff. But track, you can just be – you can make teams like Sydney. She made teams – Olympic mm-hmm. teams in high school. So, I mean, you almost made yourself in high school. So, I feel like this that's so hard yeah. because you really have to be accomplished. But being an American sprinter and being an American athlete, it's so hard to be accomplished as other countries because – it's a, it's, a, it's a bloodbath. It's really easy to draw the line, like, and see how good you are in track and field because we have times. <laughs> yeah. Well, I know that the time part. Yeah, I get that. But yeah. just, like, so, I think it's more so, like, when it comes to I, times, I, it's hard. The, the, I, uh, you go. I'm going to put in my Jesus <laughs> in terms of talking about, you know, the difference between our situations. I'm referring more to not if you have the ability to run as fast as a pro. But are you going to continue to compete at the mm-hmm. level of a pro? Yeah. Once you have entered that ring, you can't go back. Yeah. But we have a very gray area in the, that middle area. Yeah. That is gray right now. They are allowed to go back and forth. Yeah. The Arians, who was able to stay in high school, um, but he turned pro. Yeah. Candace turned pro and now is running for pro meets. You know, uh, a lot of people will try to yell out at me is like well you did is it. like no i stayed in high school yeah. and i turned pro yeah. and i mm-hmm. went on the pro circuit yeah right? yeah but when we have high schoolers who mm-hmm. come up or even collegians who are allowed to run in pro mm-hmm. meets they go back yeah to, high, to their yeah. high school season into their collegiate season right. they got an advantage they got an advantage to run with people who were more competitive than the area that they just came from yeah. that gives them an advantage yeah. and letting them go back and forth like that mm, oh, okay. i, I consider mean, that as yeah. unfair yeah, yeah, I, I was gonna say the same thing so like there's a path to do it and you, there should be not so like barrier to entry but it almost yeah. makes it some of some sort of a gimmick to like oh let's put this high school against some of the yeah. pros yeah, yeah. yeah. you should go through the proper path to be able to like race yeah. the pros yeah. So, yeah. You yeah i feel like for most like i understand what that means because like if you're in high school right and you get to run against a professional athlete like same thing when they like four by fours when mm-hmm. four of us are in two fifty and four, yes. they yeah. got when you're chasing somebody. I don't it's care if they so got their doors locked. It's easy. Like if you have a rabbit, like you run. Okay, I, I'm high school. I run ten one. If you have a guy that you know you run nine eight, it, you're gonna run faster because of the level of competition. So I definitely think like high school should stay with high school, mm-hmm. college should stay with college, and pro stay with pro. Yeah. But then like, what's pro like? Because there's some people that are are talented in track and field, but they're just, they don't fund. So it's like they don't have a, they they have a good enough agent. Or good enough, you know, marketability where they can't get a, a deal, but they're running just as fast as pro people. I benefited a hundred percent from the bouncing back and forth. Like my biggest race of my life was with in a race that was set up to be the American indoor mile record. Yeah. Mm. Um, so it was when Cooper and Cole wanted to run three fifty. Yeah. yeah, and I just hung on. <laughs> and I, well, all they needed, the only reason I got thrown in, is because to make it ret- record eligible, they needed five men to start the race. So they're like, well, we got four and just throw this kid in. And I was a 401 miler and they're just like, oh, he might finish, he might not. And I'm like, let's compete here. So for me to go and bash that and say that it didn't help me, um, but also at that time, was I ready to commit? Was I supposed to run 352? No, I was not. (laughs) But like you said, that level of competition, I we're competitors. So it's like, okay, I want to go beat these guys, even though they're, they don't even consider me in the race as a part of the race. Um, just chasing them and trying to beat them. Okay, I just ran 352. But see, I did blow up, which w- they did the same thing in a 5K. They had another guy go in. They ran the 5K to get a world standard, and they did. And the guy who tried to go with them blew up. Yeah. So that guy would have been screwed. I would have been okay, but that guy would have been screwed. I think that's a little bit different than a Milrose, which I also ran. <laughs> so I, I finished seventh, but I could see, okay, let's not invite, at least let's not invite high schoolers because there's there's not a high schooler that's going to go to Milrose and compete at that level. And a lot of the times it's like, okay, the same race where this guy's going to run 350 and win, mm-hmm. we're going to be cheering for a high schooler to run 359. Right. Like, yeah. Yeah. even in that race where they do have the guy to drag him along, and you can go to Hobbs Kessler who ran the 1500 and he ran 334 and competed and then went and won his state in mm-hmm. high school. Mm-hmm. So it's a huge risk to go back and forth. Yeah. And I agree, like, 
when Hobbs ran that, it wasn't, I think it was a silver label. But Milrose is a gold. Okay, yeah. let's draw the line at silvers. Because yeah. you can compete in those, and it's it can bring out the best in you. Mm -hmm. But completely avoiding those opportunities, I wouldn't be pro had I not run that yeah. 352. Right. I probably wouldn't. Because I then went on to, okay, I have confidence to run these other big races, and I ran some other big times, and I competed, and put my put my name in the hat for some other really big races um but it wasn't it wasn't even a label race mm. like it didn't mean anything other than the time so yeah it's a that's a tough line to draw and i did have some advantages coming back especially from milro seeing how those pros race yeah but that was a gold circuit mm. like and winning that is a big deal and i was mid-pack um as a as a college kid who's yeah. ready to turn pro right uh and then yeah, so I could I could see there being a line drawn, but omitting people completely is it's gonna take away a lot of opportunity, especially in the European and African systems where they are just pro. They don't have an amateur arena. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they have high schoolers right. running with pros all the time. Yeah, I definitely think like uh, get high schoolers who get in these meets, but they should add pros or people that are trying to get a contract in because high schoolers. They have all the time in the world to go to college and enjoy, but as a pro, yeah. like you're trying, you're going to these meets or, you know, a uh, post-collegiate athlete, you know, mm -hmm. trying to get a deal. You're trying to pay your bills, yeah. but you love yeah. track, but this is the easiest way to pay bills. Like, and you benefited from you, but you went pro after you, you the trials in 2016. So it wasn't like you went back to high school right. and ran, like you went yeah. pro. So yeah. it was like, or like, I was going to go to college. Yeah. Like it's yeah. like, like Mike, Mike ran and then he went to college. Yeah. Right. So it was just like, he got the little taste of running as the pro. Then he's going to college. Like I never got that opportunity at LSU my my senior year, to run against a pro. I mean that would have been great because like mm -hmm. I was like you know it's time to go but like yeah, I didn't have that opportunity until trials and by that time you know, I was burnt out like, yeah. like I was burnt <laughs> yeah. out no, so it's, it's it's frustrating because like you give high schoolers and, and college kids all but even college these big universities all this fun they can go to any meet in the country like why are you mm -hmm. putting them in these meets when their school will literally can pay for them to go in. and they have NCAA meets. Like they how have these so yeah. meets. little meets yeah. to yes. go to as pro, yeah. especially yes. in the U.S. Like they have all these yes. college meets, and obviously, like as a pro, when you run a college meet, it's not really graded like a diamond league meet. Right. Like I know, mm -hmm. like for me, I ran nineteen eighty one, and I ran you know the college system. Mm -hmm. Vernon, uh, former LSU New Balance okay. athlete, he ran you no know, not as fast as me the two hundred, but since he did all his runs in the diamond league meet, he was a top. Ranking in the world yeah. more than me. I ran way faster than him. Yeah. He's a foreign runner. And I'm naturally faster than him. No, I'm not. Yeah. Don't disrespect no, Vernon. But, 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 but he was high yeah. in the, the world ranking. And he always dropped it on me. Like, yeah, you know, you got to come with the big dogs. I could have, but like, it just, how it worked out. It just didn't work out. So it was just, I definitely feel that line should be drawn. And what well, you explained to me. Bryce, you look like you wanted, you've been wanting to say something. <laughs> you haven't gotten the chance. It's, it's, no, I, was, I was trying to throw it in there, but yeah, that's a big topic topic to be had. But mm -hmm. yeah, there does need to be more distinguished, like of having the pro, almost like, a, I don't know how to implement it with like a yeah. league. But um, yeah, I, mean, there, there, I agree there needs to be a line drawn. Yeah, or just throwing the high schoolers in the diamond leagues. That was, that's a big thing in distance. And you just watch them. Like I was saying, it's like, watch this kid barely break four in a race that, goes three uh, in outdoor last year 347 mm -hmm. 348 and then this kid barely breaks four it's, yeah. i think like it's not i feel like if you have any, any affiliation with like college team high school team you can't enter certain meets like if you run with your college team right mm -hmm. you, you should like yeah you should, like like once you run one meet with you know lsu florida whatever it may be you have you can't enter like also usa is different because yeah, yeah that, but uh, it's that's fine how do we do USA's and the championships. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you would just have it as well, that's stay fine. as amateur as yeah. is because it's technically an amateur sport underneath the Olympic level. But just because it's mm -hmm. under the Olympics view of amateur, that doesn't mean that our circuit mm -hmm. needs yeah. to be amateur. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like USA's, I feel like it's fine because like they ran fast. They deserve to be there. They they proved themselves through the season that they just are like you know Hobbs like he ran three like he ran whatever and Aaron ran fast so they deserve to be at USA's. Yeah. But the other meets that money meets because mm -hmm. even they run, they can't collect the money. Yeah, yeah they, they, so they can't like, even collect, collect the money. money. So they got to win. You got some ways to collect the money. Let me. You can write <laughs> off all that stuff. Oh, my hotel. Yeah, yeah. my hotel rooms were five hundred dollars a night for sure. No, <laughs> it's like it's, it's, it's hectic. All right, guys. Um, I've, I've enjoyed these conversations. To be honest, uh, we are out of time, and 
thank you for coming, each and every one of you. I love hearing all the different views on, you know, just joining to a trailblazer in herself. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and the greatest thing is we, we barely got to talk about any actual track meet. So right, yeah. <laughs> we're going to have to do this another time, maybe individual one by one. But mm -hmm. again, thank you for coming. Uh, everybody, I hope you enjoyed this uh, sprint talk and just remember to like, comment, subscribe. And as Raven said earlier, make sure you hit the little bell so you can, right. you can notify when we have a <laughs> <laughs> panel like this. <laughs>